there are thousands of different types of exercise routines that you can do. And they, all of them claim that they're the best. What I wanna do today is show you what's behind exercise so you can understand the anatomy of exercise and think with the underlying principles so you're not locked into a pattern of exercise or you end up doing some exercise that is a complete waste of time. The goal I would think with exercise is to get the maximum benefit with the minimal amount of time. But to do that, you really need to just understand two simple definitions, okay? And so all of exercise really comes down to two different uh, types of exercise. You have anaerobic exercise, that means without oxygen. And then you have aerobic exercise, which means with oxygen. And let me just differentiate this definition because there's two different definitions for aerobic. You have aerobic type routine where you're gonna do this like, I don't know, dance routine or something like that within like 45 minutes versus another definition, which means with oxygen, okay? So at the cellular level, depending on what type of exercise you do, you're gonna be using this system or this system. And there's a lot of variations in between, but just understanding these two, okay? And how these certain variables are different between this exercise and this will allow everything just to make sense for you. And now you have the ability to adjust these factors to really maximize your results and, and actually not waste any more time. So let's take a look at this, check this out, anaerobic, right? If you're gonna exercise without oxygen, what do you think the duration of the exercise is gonna be? How long can you hold your breath? Not very long, okay? So the duration for this type of exercise is very, very short, okay? With air, it's very, very long. So then let's look at intensity. The intensity of the anaerobic exercise is gonna be high. The intensity of the aerobic is going to be low. The recovery from this type of exercise because the intensity is so high, is gonna be a lot longer because you are creating a lot more damage to the muscle versus having a low intensity exercise, you're not creating a lot of damage, so your recovery is gonna be very, very short. And then of course, the frequency of this exercise should be a lot less, and this can be a lot more. But let's first start with the goal, okay? The goal of this type of exercise is to increase muscle stimulation, increase muscle growth, increase muscle strength of the body, as well as increasing the speed of how fast you can go, okay? Versus the goal of this system is to create more endurance, more capacity to go longer without fatigue. So the question is, what type of exercise should you do? You should do a combination of both because you do wanna at least maintain your muscles, okay? And of course, having endurance is really important too because you don't wanna be walking up a, a hill and just get out of breath just immediately, you want that endurance for many different reasons, cardiovascular health, longevity, et cetera. Sometimes you hear the concept that if you do a high intensity interval training workout for seven minutes, you'll get the same benefits as an hour of walking on the treadmill. Well, the question is what benefits are you looking at? Because the benefits from either one are different. I mean, this type of exercise will lower cortisol, this will increase cortisol, at least temporarily. This system right here, because it's using oxygen, will oxidize more fat, okay, during the workout. This system right here burns mainly sugar and glucose in the muscle, but the hormone activation will cause you to burn fat 24 to 48 hours later when you're sleeping. So really, when you're comparing these workouts, it's not really fair to say which one is better or worse. So you really need to just understand the differences between both of them so you can actually use the information and tailor make your workout to your goal. But let's first talk about anaerobic type exercise. There is some great information by Mike Metzer, who basically was the first person to uh, win Mr. Universe uh, with a perfect score. He wrote multiple books, but he really talked about intensity training. And I want to share a couple principles that I really think are valid. And you can use these principles in many different ways. Mike was all about maximum benefit and minimum time. And he talks about this variable intensity, which is a very important variable, especially if you're trying to grow muscle or even maintain muscle. The more intense you exercise, and let me just clarify that, I'm talking about using maximum effort 
to create complete muscle fatigue to the point where you cannot do even one more rep, okay? So that's what I mean by high intensity. So you're creating enough stimulus to the muscle where you're doing at least six reps, okay? Six to nine reps, but you can't go more than six to nine reps. No matter what, you are at your maximum, your body won't let you go any further, and that is gonna create enough stimulus and enough damage to the muscle to create a repair action in the recovery phase, which will then make you stronger. But here's the interesting thing about that. If you're gonna create that much intensity and that much stimulus, the recovery is going to be very long. And I'm talking about seven to 14 days, okay? So let's say you work out, right? And you recover within, I don't know, a day or two. All that means is that your intensity was not at 100% and you didn't create complete muscle fatigue. Well, of course you have other factors too. Uh, an average person is not gonna jump right into that type of workout. And also if you're older, like me, 57, uh, you're not gonna jump into that either, especially if you have joint arthritis or some type of disc problem. In fact, you have to be kind of healthy to do it at this degree. However, the concept of this is important. You can take a variation of this. What we're trying to do is create enough intensity up to your ability to tolerate that intensity. So then the hormones, the body chemicals, the enzymes can come in there and repair and build a stronger body. But the key is letting your body recover to the point where you're fully recovered. Now, how do you know if you're fully recovered? It is a bit of an arbitrary thing because it's subjective. Um, it's how you feel. D did the soreness go away? Are you at the point where your body is like ready? Yes, I am ready to work out. I mean, there's so many times that I worked out where let's say even the second or third day, I'm like, I'm not ready yet. I'm just not feeling it. I'm feeling tired. I'm feeling like sore. I'm, I'm just going to wait. So this is very important. Waiting till you have a full recovery before you do the next cycle of exercise. And then you're playing with the, these two variables, increasing your intensity over time and then increasing the recovery. And then you'll find as you get more fit and the muscles respond, your recovery time will be a little bit less but it's okay to wait seven to even 14 days to fully recover after a really hardcore workout. Now let's compare that to a moderate amount of intensity, okay? First of all, you're not gonna get as sore. You're not gonna get as much stimulation to the muscle. You're not gonna get as much strength or muscle mass or speed because the trigger for all of this is the intensity. So it's really all about intensity. However, you'll get some benefits, but you're gonna spend a lot more time in the gym with duration because your intensity is not high. And how many people do you see at the gym using these moderate weights or these exercise equipment that they're doing, I don't know, seven sets, eight sets, 10 sets, thinking that that is the thing that they need to do. The complete muscle fatigue, pushing to failure is the single most important factor in getting to your goals. So if you really build up to this level, you're only gonna be working out like once or twice a week. Now I'm talking about the anaerobic workout. This workout, I would recommend to do you know, more frequently, three times a week. For me, it's daily because I can recover in 24 hours, okay? Because I'm doing you know, light intensity type activities, walking, hiking, yoga, I do Pilates, and now I'm doing gyrotonics, which is a completely different uh, exercise where you're working range of motion type stretching type things, which you're not really uh, getting tired in an exercise, but I'm doing it for more of a joint rehab. And so the lower intensity, the more aerobic, the longer you're probably going to have to do the workout, like 60 plus minutes for a workout, right? But you can pretty much do that every day or every other day, depending on the intensity. So your recovery is much shorter. The frequency of working out is going to be more with the end result of having more cardiovascular endurance as well as muscle endurance. So you can go longer. Now, there are so many other exercises that are in between here. You have jogging, cycling, swimming at various intensities, dancing, spin bike, and it can go from high intensity, low intensity. But like I said before, based on the intensity, I mean, if you're cycling up a hill and you're, uh, you're going as hard as you can to muscle failure, that would be something that would stimulate muscle growth to a certain degree. You're gonna get sore the next day. 
and it's going to take time to recover. It might not take a week of recovery, but maybe it takes two or three days to recover. And then you start the cycle over again. Same thing with spin bike. Let's say you go as hard as you can until like you hit a wall. You cannot go any further, right? So let's take another example, uh, high intensity interval training, like sprinting, right? Can you do an all out sprint for five minutes? No, maybe you could do it for 30 seconds. If you can do it for longer, that just means your intensity is a little bit lower. So this is all about adjusting the intensity to your body at first to see what you can tolerate to be able to fit into wherever you are on this scale right here. But anyway, I wanted to give you some background principles of exercise so you can think with the information and then apply the right exercise to where you are at with your recovery and what you want to achieve. Now, the next most important video to watch would be on this recovery capacity. There are things you can do to increase your recovery, and that is the next video you should check out. I put it up right here.